Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Please welcome Matt Kramer, President and CEO of the Catholic Foundation. Good evening, everybody. I'm Matt Kramer, President and CEO of the Catholic Foundation. On behalf of our Board of Trustees and staff, welcome to the 41st Annual Catholic Foundation Award Dinner. You're in for a wonderful time tonight, and it sounds like you're already having one. Tonight, we're celebrating and recognizing Catholic philanthropy and community service at its absolute best. For almost 70 years, the Catholic Foundation has served as a bridge between our donors and our charitable passions. The past five years have been filled with significant growth based on years of hard work that bears fruit over time. We've seen growth both in terms of contributions from donors, estate gifts from donors after their lifetime, and in grants distributed to religious, charitable, and educational organizations. Tonight, we pay tribute to remarkable lay leaders in our Catholic community, Georgia and Mark Lyons. Our former Catholic Foundation Award honorees are listed in your dinner program, and so too are the former Hal Tehan Scholar Award recipients. Please take a program home with you tonight. Before we enjoy a great meal, please help me in welcoming the Auxiliary Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Dallas, the Most Reverend Greg Kelly. This is from the Book of Revelation. I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, salvation comes from our God who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. Let us pray. Loving Father, it is our destiny, which you alone make possible, to join this great multitude at the end of our journey in this world. We are already joined to them through so many bonds of love and affection and faith that you forge in this world. We thank you for the witness and generosity of so many who have gone before us, so many who have accompanied us and shown your love to us through their love and generosity and courage. Many you have called home this past year. Alan Bell, Brad Camp, Deacon John Katsouris, Bill Condon, Michael Corboy, Mary Frances Deloach, Michael Grimshaw, Rosemary Hager Bond, Catherine Hogan, John Kestel Jr., Michael McGuire, J. Patrick McLaughlin, Emmett Smith, Patricia Stark, Jerry Thompson Sr., David Webb, John Shepard, Leah Rhodes Passant. We thank you for all the gifts you poured out upon them in their lives, for the richness and generosity of their response to those gifts. You alone know the full effect of that. You alone free them now from their human imperfections and prepare them for eternal life granted through your son's death and resurrection, which alone redeems us and gives us hope. We thank you for the gifts you pour out upon us in this present moment of celebration for Mark and Georgia Lyons and for their family gathered here, for their generous response to your ever more generous gifts to them in their lives together, in their work, in their, in their service, in their suffering, in all they do to give you glory and grow as your disciples, in honoring them, we desire to honor you, the giver of the gifts. We 
We thank you in this moment for the gifts of food and drink which you bestow upon us. May we never take these gifts for granted, but use them well and share them abundantly with others. Through all of us whom you have called, whom you have filled with your spirit, through all you seek to go f through all who seek you with a sincere heart, may your love remain visible and effective in the world. And may we always remain through your grace in movement towards you and towards our destiny to be gathered around your throne with brothers and sisters of every nation, race, people, and tongue, giving you praise to your son, Jesus Christ, the lamb who offered himself for the life of the world, who offered himself for our lives. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Bishop. Thank you, Bishop Kelly. And we want to also uh, honor you for having your eighth anniversary of being a bishop tomorrow, is his anniversary day, tomorrow. <laughs> Along with Bishop Kelly, we also want to welcome Most Reverend Edward J. Burns, the eighth Bishop of Dallas, who celebrated his seventh anniversary of being Bishop of the Diocese of Dallas yesterday. So thank you all for being here tonight. We're delighted to share this evening with you. Tonight's award dinner is a product of many people on our team and our strategic partners. And I appreciate their hard work and I want to offer a special thank you to our Vice President of Development, Dorino Adaud Padian, who orchestrated this gathering. And to Cheryl Mansour, our Senior Vice President of Donor Relations, whose plans and ideas from numerous awards dinners over the years touch many, many aspects of tonight's gathering. Please help me also extend a thank you to them and to our foundation staff, SunWest Communications, and also to the Hilton Anatole team who prepared your dinner and are here to make your night enjoyable. Just a few housekeeping items as dinner starts. We'll be taking group photos of each table as part of a keepsake for Georgia and Mark. We'll be placing hundreds of photos from tonight on our website, and thanks in advance for helping participate in group table photos when a photographer comes to your table. We hope you'll enjoy the video presentation on the screens during the show, the, during dinner, that shows interesting information about the Catholic Foundation. And I encourage you to enjoy your meal and conversation, but I do have something important to say that some of you might want to listen to. Uh, and I know what I say next is going to make the crowd get even louder. And that is, let's talk about the flowers. So the person invited to take home the flowers tonight is the individual at your table whose birthday is closest to Georgia and Mark's wedding anniversary. So get ready. Their wedding anniversary is June 3rd. Congratulations if you're taking home the flowers, and please enjoy your dinner.
Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the stage for a special performance by Lucia Welch, a singer and close friend of Georgia and Mark. Someone told me this might be one of your favorite songs. Georgia, Georgia. Let's hear it for Steve Bayless in the orchestra. Just an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind. Just an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind. On my mind. On my mind. And because it's the season of love, and we're all spreading our love here tonight, this next song is dedicated to love. If you know it, sing with me.
something in the wind has learned my name and it's telling me that things are not the same in the leaves on the trees and the touch of the breeze there's a pleasing sense of heaviness for me there is only one wish on my mind when this day is through i hope that i will find that tomorrow I'm on the top of the world looking down on creation and the only explanation I can find is the love that I've found ever since you've been around. Your love's put me at the top of the world. I'm on the top of the world looking down on creation and the only explanation I can find. I have one more for you. It's very clear your love is here to stay. Not for a year, but ever. But oh my dear, your love is here to stay. Together we're going a long, long way. In time, the Rockies may crumble to Bronson and tumble. They're only made of clay. But your love is here to Georgia, thank you for all you do for the Catholic Foundation and for the Diocese of Dallas. And thank you all for being here tonight for this special occasion. The radio and the telephone and the movies let me know. May all be passing fancies and in time. Thank you, and thank you again to Steve Bayless and the orchestra. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the Catholic Foundation CEO, Matt Kramer. Wasn't that an amazing performance, huh? Thank you, Lucia Welsh, a dear friend of Mark and George's from All Saints. Next, I'd like you to meet two special friends of the Catholic Foundation. They are this year's Award Dinner Committee Chairs and our 2017 Catholic Foundation honorees, Jane and Don Hanready. 
Jane and Don led our award dinner committee with professionalism and efficiency, filling the ballroom tonight. Please help me welcome and thank them for their dedication and leadership. I hope you're not disappointed, but we're not singing. Maybe. <laughs> it, it is a nice view up here. 1,050 smiles, 108 tables, wonderful people. Jane and I are honored to be a part of this. Across the room, Together, we are the foundation. Tonight, Georgia and Mark, you are the foundation. Everyone across the diocese appreciates your active mission. The lions are everywhere. Tonight, we are indeed inspired to act, to follow, for the first time, perhaps, or now, perhaps more often. Georgia and Mark recognize the needs are real, a woman and a man for others. Greg and Kristen are certainly very proud. The Orsino and Lyons families are proud of you. Back in July, we began to form the Catholic Foundation Award Dinner Committee. With the 70 individuals and a couple dinner committee member all-stars, raise your hands, be recognized. Let's congratulate. Thank you. We recognize your efforts and success. Congratulations, you have filled a large room. The Catholic Foundation leadership and professional team has planned and orchestrated a wonderful celebration. It is amazing to Jane and I, it's amazing to see the wonderful impact the current and former Catholic Foundation trustees have across our diocese. We also wish to thank SunWest Communications and Bass Communications for handling so many details. Appreciate the volunteers. Jane and I appreciate the generous, the very, very generous table sponsors. We welcome the Catholic Foundation family and friends. We salute you, the lay leaders. Georgia and Mark, enjoy your special evening. Thanks for everything. We love you. Thank you, Jane and Don, for your magnific magnificent work in support of the Catholic Foundation. And per your request, we'll be sending an honorarium in your name to the Gorman Society, the endowment fund established to sustain the Catholic Foundation in perpetuity. Each year at the award dinner, we celebrate excellence in Catholic education. Being that we recently celebrated Catholic Schools Week across the region, I'd like to extend a big thank you to all the administrators, staff, educators, students, parents, and Catholic school alumni in the room tonight. <laughs> the Catholic Foundation conducts an annual scholarship program among our Catholic high school junior students. Several years ago, we renamed the, Hal Tehan, the award the Hal Tehan Scholar Award 
in honor of a late Catholic Foundation leader, donor, and friend. For the competition, each of the eight local Catholic high schools submits one nomination based upon the junior student's achievement, academic achievement, community and church involvement, leadership, and an essay that illustrates what their Catholic education means to them. Nominations are evaluated by a panel of foundation trustees and advisory council members. Each nominee receives a $2,500 scholarship for their senior year, and the recipient of the Hal Tehan Scholar Award receives a $10,000 scholarship for their senior year. In 2023, the Hal Tehan Scholar Award recipient was Charlotte Blank. She's now a senior at John Paul II High School, and she's here with us tonight. Charlotte plans to continue her educational studies and is evaluating several opportunities that include acceptance into the University of Notre Dame, the University of Texas, and Texas Christian University. And she'll make a final decision on where to attend later this semester. Maybe the applause helped you, Charlotte. May I'm now very pleased to introduce our 2024 Hal Tian Scholar Award recipient, Josh Hayes, the second oldest son of Alicia and Rob Hayes at Capel. The Hayes are parishioners at St. Anne Catholic Parish, and they also regularly attend Mass and other liturgical events at Our Lady of Dallas Cistercian Abbey in Irving. In addition to his parents, Joss is joined tonight by his brand new sister, baby, baby sister, sorry, Elizabeth, and several people who have influenced him at Cistercian, including Father Paul, Father John, and several tables of his classmates. Way to go, Hawks. Please join me in congratulating Josh as he offers his thanks and shares with us his beautiful essay on the impact that a Catholic education has had on his life. Well, thank you for such a gracious introduction, Mr. Kramer. It's strange being up here and realizing how often I've zoned out during all the thank yous of all these speeches when you realize when you get up here how authentic and meaningful they really all are. And so in this way, I'd like to start by thanking the Catholic Foundation for everything they've done here tonight and outside these walls from uh, their poor ministry to helping televise masses during the pandemic. Um, also, as Mr. Kramer mentioned, about 20 of my Cistercian brothers all, are all here with me tonight. They're raising their hands over there. And yeah, I most certainly wouldn't be here without all of their support through the years. And in a special way, our foremaster or sort of monk mentor through the years at Cistercian, Father John Beyer, um, has been a wonderful part of all of our lives. And then lastly, of course, to my family. I love, I love all of them more than I could ever say. And well, my mom's here with her number seven, Elizabeth, who got baptized this morning. So. But I've been called up here to read an essay I wrote from the Catholic Foundation's prompt, What Does My Catholic Education Mean to Me? And so I shall begin. C.S. Lewis wrote, we do not want merely to see beauty. We want to be united with the beauty we see, to pass into it, to receive it into ourselves, to bathe in it and to become part of it. Nevertheless, one must first recognize beauty in order to be bathed in it. My Catholic education has taught me this recognition. But the question arises, what is this recognition? I find anecdotes the most suitable way of exhibiting. Benjamin Franklin wrote about a ladder of virtues with which each virtue being achieved leads to self-mastery. Only in a Catholic education would we have read this in class before going to a chapel and meditating there 
about the growth of our own virtues in this way. No other education would then give homework, labeled soul work, to construct such a ladder for ourselves. No other education brings a class on retreat who cry on each other's shoulders for two days straight, often in front of the entire class, and yet they feel no shame, for they have become brothers. No other education gives students the opportunity to go to Mass, surrounded by those brothers, to pray with their teachers, or to see God's good manifested around them so concretely, whether that is from posters to a rosary club, to walking by a group of brothers praying the liturgy of the hours in the morning. This is what my Catholic education has been to me. It has united me with beauty by saturating my scholastic experiences. Beauty truly is, as Pope Benedict XVI said, in a tribute of God himself in his revelation. This is what I mean when I say my Catholic education has taught me to recognize beauty. Not only have I been taught about the beauty, but I have experienced it as an attribute of God. Through seeing so often this beauty, I wish to bring those around me into its grasp, to have them receive this beauty into themselves. It is this vision of C.S. Lewis's infinite beauty of which all created beauty is but a reflection that continues to strengthen in me the desire to share this beauty, quite possibly through the vocation of the priesthood or religious life. Having seen beauty as I have, I can conceive of no path in life more noble than giving my entire life to pursuing, knowing, and sharing this beauty with all of those around me, uniting myself to it continually and without reservation. Augustine prays, too late have I loved you, beauty so ancient and so new, a beauty that I too would not have learned to recognize without my Catholic education. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Josh. We're very proud of you and please know that the Catholic Foundation will be cheering you on as you continue your high school years and make decisions on your future. We're very blessed to be in the Diocese of Dallas where growth and discipleship are more than buzzwords. Let me introduce our Chief Shepherd, the Most Reverend Edward J. Burns. So, I have to follow Josh Hayes, huh? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Matt Kramer. I appreciate that. Joshua, congratulations, and we are so proud of you. And you make us proud, especially with all that happens in Catholic education within this diocese. As Matt indicated, last week was Catholic Schools Week and our new superintendent of schools, Dr. Rebecca Hamill, and I went to a number of schools, and she is here this evening, which is wonderful. Um, and we went to a number of schools last week for Catholic Schools Week. And it was great when we went to the parishes and the schools that were in need, that they ever so proudly spoke about how Catholic Foundation was so instrumental through their grants in giving them what they needed. In fact, as we went through the school, they pointed out 
that through the grant, they were able to receive chemistry tables and they showed them off. And then in, in various other areas of the school, you know, tables and, and, and desks and materials that they needed, they boasted of how they utilized the grants of Catholic, Catholic Foundation in their schools. To all of you who support the Catholic Foundation, as the shepherd, I want to say thank you and really express the gratitude on behalf of the many people that you serve with the generosity of the Catholic Foundation. Matt Kramer indicated earlier that yesterday was my anniversary of installation. It's hard to believe that I've been here seven years as the Bishop of the Diocese of Dallas. And last year, oh, thank you. And the Catholic Foundation gave me a wonderful pictorial book of that day. It was an absolute splendid day. And yesterday, I had the chance to go to the cathedral for the noon mass uh, on my anniversary. Of course, I, I wanted to go back to the scene of the crime. But ultimately, to go to the cathedral and give thanks to Almighty God for all of you. It is absolutely amazing, the people of this diocese, your commitment, your dedication, your generosity, your steadfastness, your faithfulness. As the shepherd of this diocese, it's an honor to be the bishop. With it, I see the wonderful work that is ahead for all of us. It's a joy that the Catholic Foundation joined with us during that hellacious opportunity, that awful moment during the global pandemic with the televised mass and getting us on our feet for, for that outreach. Now, through that, we have the homebound ministry, whereby all these people who have been at home all this time are experiencing the church coming to them through the homebound ministry through an army of volunteers that are going to them to assist them, to be with them, to bring them the Eucharist, and to make sure that they know that their church is with them. The Catholic Foundation helps us do all of that, and we are grateful. This evening, we have the chance to highlight a wonderful couple, Mark and Georgia Lyons. Thank you so much for your leadership within this diocese. And when we have an opportunity to uphold the good work of the diocese, it is a joy to rejoice with individuals who highlight that for us, truly models of discipleship and the work of the church. You are a blessing to us. And in turn, do we ask God's blessing upon you and your loved ones for all that you have done, the way that you have given yourself in so many ways, you are a blessing. And so allow me to say that on behalf of the entire Diocese of Dallas, the priest, the deacons, the faithful, Mark and Georgia, congratulations and you have our prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop, for your pastoral, outgoing leadership and your support of the Catholic Foundation. Everyone here, regardless of their religious affiliation, benefits from the ideas you turn into action that serve the good of our entire community. Our next speaker is Dan Odom, the board chair of the Catholic Foundation. Dan and his wife, Mary Ann, attend Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Dallas, and they have four grown children. They represent well what it means to be ambassadors and servants of our Catholic community. Please join me in welcoming Dan. Thank you, Matt. Good evening. So I have to follow Josh Hayes and Bishop Burns 
and I'm the only thing standing between you and the awards is why you came here tonight. But we'll try to make it fun. Thank you all for being here tonight. It's a wonderful event celebrating Catholic philanthropy, and it's made special because you're here. Don and Jane mentioned it, we are all the foundation. We get to do what we are able to do at the foundation because of all of you in the audience, and we're so very appreciative of that. I'm very fortunate as the board chair of the foundation to work alongside a group of incredibly talented fellow trustees and an absolutely outstanding Catholic Foundation staff. The work they do each and every day on behalf of our donors is just simply excellent. Each year, it's been our tradition to have the Catholic Foundation Award honoree recommend a $10,000 grant go to a charitable organization of their choice from the foundation. This year, our honorees, Georgia and Mark Lyons, have chosen Our Lady of Perpetual Help Catholic School in Dallas in support of their operations. OLPH is represented tonight by Megan Martinez, the School Advisory Council President, and Father Giuseppe Spoto from OLPH. Congratulations to the OLPH community. As we celebrate Catholic philanthropy tonight, we want to let you know that the Catholic Foundation team takes very seriously the responsibility and trust that donors have placed in us. As a community foundation that's independent of the Diocese of Dallas, we carry out our donors' char charitable intentions now and into the future. We exist because of our donors, we exist because of your generosity. And thanks to our donors and our many significant supporters, we're making a significant impact in our Catholic community and beyond. Many of the funds established and housed at the foundations help Catholic churches, Catholic schools, and charitable organizations grow and thrive. We assist donors with their current giving while they're living and we also help establish their plan giving for after their lifetime. There's even an endowment fund at the Catholic Foundation known as the Gorman Society that supports the operations of the foundation. At its core, the purpose of this endowment fund, named after one of the foundation's founders, Bishop Thomas Gorman, is to ensure that the foundation can continue its good work in perpetuity. Allow me to offer a very brief snapshot of the tremendous progress taking place at the foundation. Today, the foundation houses more than 570 charitable funds and trust. At the end of last year, the foundation managed more than $290 million in assets, thanks to your generosity. Last year alone, the Catholic Foundation distributed $20.9 million through more than 2,700 grants that impacted 880 organizations. Yes. Over time, the foundation has provided more than $287 million to religious, educational, and charitable organizations. What's notable in terms of momentum Matt indicated this earlier, the things that have gone before and how we got to this point, what's important in terms of momentum, that in the past 10 years alone, the Catholic Foundation has provided more than $200 million in grants. Thank you. And again, it's because of each of you that have chosen to give through the Foundation and to become part of the foundation, so we're so thankful for that. For those of you that don't know about the foundation, I'm hopeful that you'll take the time to learn more about it. And I hope that you'll do, and you'll find out why people like my wife Marianne and I use the foundation. Like many in this room, we established plans for giving through the foundation. 
when we set up our donor advised fund at the foundation, we put aside funds to support organizations and causes that we care about. We partner with the, the Catholic Foundation because we trust the foundation to be good stewards of our assets. And we give through the foundation because it's a convenient and simple way to direct our giving through online access. I would challenge you, if you give at least $10,000 a year to charitable organizations to reach out to the Catholic Foundation staff, you'll learn more about how we can help simplify and potentially amplify the impact of your charitable giving. Please know the Foundation team is available to assist you in any of your charitable giving needs. And now, the reason you're all here. We turn our attention to our 41st Annual Catholic Foundation Award honorees. The actual award itself is located on Georgia and Mark's table tonight, and you can see it on the video screen. Every year, the Catholic Foundation Award recognizes an individual, couple, or family for their distinguished service and support to further the religious, charitable, and educational needs throughout our local Catholic community. Our past recipients have made a deep and meaningful impact on our community. It's the reason we recognize them with our highest honor, the Catholic Foundation Award. This year's honorees, Georgia and Mark Lyons, add tremendously to that rich history. We've all heard how vital the laity is in the leadership of the Catholic Church. What you will hear tonight is how our honorees responded to that very call for lay leadership to rise up and make an impact at both the parish and the diocesan level. Georgia and Mark, thank you for the impact you've made on our diocese and our community. Thank you for the significant impact and unwavering support you've provided to the Catholic Foundation. Thank you for being such great role models for countless folks in this diocese, including myself. And as a fellow native of South Louisiana, thank you for always bringing a bit of lanyap to everything that you do. And for, for the non-Cajuns out there, that means to bring extra. And Georgia and Mark always bring extra to all that they do. To introduce a video about Georgia and Mark, Please help me welcome a fellow trustee of the Catholic Foundation, the chair of our development committee, and a new dad for the seventh time <laughs> just a few weeks ago, along with his wonderful wife, Amanda. Please welcome Jeff Scheffelbein. Let's be sure that we find Georgia and Mark Lyons. These are the exact words that my wife says every time we're pulling up to the Anatole or any other place to celebrate another Catholic event because we want to make sure that we find Georgia and Mark Lyons. Where did that all start for me and Amanda? It started right here, of course. At the Catholic Foundation Award Dinner several years ago, when Amanda and I showed up with our new baby Benedict, at the time only four weeks old. I'm pretty sure at the time, Benedict was the youngest baby to ever show up to a Catholic Foundation Award Dinner. <laughs> this year, however, we found out that Rob and Alicia Hayes would be bringing their baby Elizabeth, born on January 22nd, and less than three weeks old, and we couldn't lose that record. <laughs> so Amanda and I waited two days after they had their baby to welcome our seventh. <laughs> so baby Eustace is over here in the corner at 17 days old, the youngest baby to ever be at the award dinner. For all of you who come from big families, you know we get competitive about the weirdest stuff. <laughs> but what does this all have to do with Georgia and Mark? Everything, literally everything. You see, 
It can be intimidating, exhausting, and stressful to bring a baby, a newborn, to fancy events like this, but especially for my wife after the multiple C-sections she's had, and that's exactly how we felt when years ago we brought baby Benedict with us. By God's grace that day, the first couple we connected with in the cocktail hour was Georgia and Mark Lyons. At the time, I knew Mark, but Amanda was just getting to know this couple, and they proceeded to do what they do best. They made us feel comfortable. They engaged us as a couple and as individuals. They shared details with us about their lives and their children. And we left that conversation feeling encouragement and gratitude, and most of all, we felt the kind of love that can best be described as the love you have for your own family. Amanda and I immediately knew that Georgia and Mark had a special and permanent place in our hearts as mentors, as friends, and as loving role models that we would seek to know better in the years ahead. And since then, we've not only deepened our relationship with Georgia and Mark, we've also witnessed the many ways in which the Lions have impacted this entire community. I'm certain that if many of you were up here, you would share how Georgia and Mark have connected with you in this same genuine and loving way, encouraging you, supporting you, and modeling the type of love and that service to God and family that we are called to live as sons and daughters of Jesus Christ. In a few minutes, you're gonna watch a pretty incredible video. It's gonna be about the life, the legacy, and the impact of Georgia and Mark. But first, I wanna share something with just the two of you, Georgia and Mark. Amanda and I have been praying for the right words to use that would honor who you are in our lives and how you've impacted us. In prayer, it became abundantly clear. My friends, the two of you are life-giving. You are life-giving. Mark, Mark, you ready? Nope. Your humility allows you to quietly work in the background, serving your wife and your beautiful family and all the others with a tenderness and excellence and obedience that reminds us of another humble servant, St. Joseph. I remember listening to you recently when you did the interview on the Guadalupe Radio Network with Dave Palmer. This entire episode of his show was about the award that you were getting, and somehow you turned it around, and instead of boasting or allowing the spotlight to be on you, you turned it around and you highlighted everybody else, including the Catholic Foundation, and poor Dave Palmer had to keep trying to extract from you something. <laughs> Your humility reigns. Georgia. Georgia, when I connect with Mother Mary, I experience a warm, kind-hearted embrace deep in my soul and it leaves me feeling encouraged, grateful, and loved. That's what you do for me and Amanda. You show a genuine interest and compassion for us and for every individual that you've ever touched here and beyond. You show us the love of a mother and the truth of the gospel simply by the way that you live your life. As Catholics, we study and attempt to emulate the lives of saints. We know that these holy men and women have answered God's call in their lives and that we can grow in holiness by following their example. And tonight, Georgia and Mark, everyone gets to hear about your lives and everyone gets to hear about your example. We, the Catholic community of Dallas and far beyond, we can grow in holiness by following the example of Georgia and Mark Lyons. And now instead of saying, let's be sure to find Georgia and Mark Lyons, we can all say, let's be sure to follow Georgia and Mark Lyons. I love you both dearly. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you a video reflecting the life, the legacy, and the impact of our dear friends, Georgia and Mark Lyons. God bless you. 
There's nobody I really respect more as a couple. They always say yes. They are both get it done kind of people. Wherever they go, there's momentum. They never stop. They are so steadfast in their faith. We aspire to be more like them. Lives have been enriched. They've just done what they feel is the right thing to do. Mom and Dad were both from South Louisiana, which is where the first four of us were born. We grew up in Plaquemine, Louisiana. Everyone knew everybody. Um, our lives centered around our school, our Catholic school, and our church parish. My parents were both uh, Acadian French. In fact, they both spoke French. Dad was always working. Mom was always looking after the kids, but always doing something for, for her family or somebody else. We grew up watching our parents volunteer. My mother volunteered for everything at church and at school. So we would have to ask permission, can I, can I have that cookie or can I have some of that cake, mom, you know, because it was always going out. So our family ended up in Midland, Texas because of our father's job. He of course then went back to Louisiana to go to Nichols State which was the best decision of his life because that's where he met Georgia. We met on a blind date, Friday the 13th, March 1970. And our mom was thrilled that Mark was bringing home a nice Cajun girl because her last name was Arsenault. And she thought it was A-R-C-E-N-E-A-U-X. Come to find out, Georgia is actually a lovely Italian girl with the last name Orsino. O-R-C-I-N-O. And boy, did mom love Georgia. Georgia taught school in New Orleans. And that's where Kristen was born. As a young married couple who is informed that their firstborn is going to have great challenges, that that might have been a turning point away from the Lord, but it wasn't. For Mark and Georgia, that was a defining moment in their faith. Mark described her as his angel. Greg, he is a, uh, I consider him to be a wonderful human being. Uh, just uh, can't say enough about him. Growing up was, was fabulous. Um, both of my parents were very involved in both Kristen and I's activities and lives and, and really invested in not only making sure that we were successful in school and sports and things of that, but also successful in gaining skills for later on in life. When Kristen went to college, she was uh, studying to be a preschool um, assist assistant. Georgia went every day with her and then came home and they did their homework together. So mom went to school with Kristen. I was her mentor and Kristen walked across that stage. It was a proud moment. It was a proud moment for us. What did you study mostly? What kind of things did you learn about? Learned about being a teacher assistant. I like seeing smiles in the kids' faces. So they have traveled the world with Special Olympics watching Kristen. I did ice skating, basketball, gymnastics, track and field. I did a lot of bowling, other sports. Golf. But bowling, golf. Looking back on it, there couldn't have been two better parents for Kristen. Ever. I've watched Kristen play basketball, I've watched golf, and uh, Mark, Mark has been super selfless, and, uh, and he's done this as long as I've known him. Is he a good coach? Yes. Yeah? He is a good coach. Who's a better putter, you or him? Oh, don't forget putting. <laughs> we started uh, Cardinal One in 2008, uh, Mark and I and two other partners. Um, we sold that business in 2012, and we started Cardinal II in 2013. Georgia eventually went to work for Don, and we just became close friends. And she organized the consultants, organized the sales effort, organized the uh, events, organized me, and problem we had with Georgia, we, we couldn't find anything she wasn't excellent at. They were involved in the community at All Saints long before I had arrived, and I had heard their story, but throughout the time as pastor there, I got to see their story lived out 
by the way they would volunteer. When Father Tony came to All Saints as our pastor, um, Georgia and I wanted to go meet him. And as we left our meeting, we said, now Father, if there's anything we can do, just let us know. I found out we were doing a capital campaign for uh, the diocese. So then Georgia gets a phone call a few months later. It's Father Tony. Georgia calls me and I'm like, you've got to be kidding. And she said, no. And they said, yes. So following the meeting, Jane and I walked to the parking lot and we both went, ah, what did we just get ourselves into? And then we just started laughing and said, okay, here we go. But by the grace of God, we, we did it. She leads by example. She gets people to do the things that they need to do. And you know, whatever you're working on with either one of them, it's gonna come out better than you expected. Whenever I see them, I see two people that witness to the love of God that they've experienced in their lives and in their marriage. Mark, as a every man, seems to fit in every circle that I go to. Having played hundreds of rounds with Mark, I can say pretty thoroughly that I, I know him and I like what I see. One day Mark asked me uh, what I really wanted out of golf. I said, well, I really want to be as good as you. And he kind of raised an eyebrow and looked at me and said, that ain't happening. <laughs> Greg went to Jesuit College Prep where their motto is a man for others. Uh, I thought it interesting that Greg did not need to go to Jesuit to learn that, that his dad, with whom he's lived his whole life, is a man for others. I attribute a lot of my uh, intangibles and integrity to just the way that, that they've lived their lives. And, um, you know, I think without them, I, I don't know where I'd be. Their values are deep rooted in faith. You see that in, in each of their actions. I couldn't believe that we would be in Colorado or Florida or New Mexico, wherever we might be. They would seek out and find somewhere where they could spend their Sunday morning at church. Recently, we were visiting a 94-year-old friend and his wife mentioned that the caregiver has a housing issue. So we're all walking out the door and Mark says, well, you guys go ahead, I'm gonna stay back here for a minute. So what was Mark doing? Well, Mark's making phone calls to help the caregiver's housing issue. Some Adana situations have called upon a friend that would go well beyond what you would ever expect. And Georgia was always there. They will do anything to help anybody, whether it's family, friends, or those in need. I watched Mark kind of flourish over the years. And he was on, he was a trustee for six years. And of those six years, he was chairman for two. And as chairman, he really embraced the job. By being the glue that brought uh, so much uh, of the diocese and the foundation together at a time when we were both navigating something that we'd never done before with the capital campaign, Mark sensed that and he used his abilities to uh, bring people together. A lot of people, once they hit retirement, it's, it's time to downshift and, and chill out. And it's been almost the opposite for them. They're busier now than I think they ever have been. I feel that Mark and George are definitely deserving of this award. They have been doing what they do, which is caring for others for as long as we've known them, 30 plus years. Mark and Georgia don't see themselves as being in a class of people who deserve these sorts of awards. It's just what they do. And do it well, and very quiet about it. Very quiet. Lots of folks give of their, their wealth and, and donations, and it's, and it's hard to do, but it's, but it's actually easy compared to your time and Mark and Georgia do both. It's, it's about what you can do to inspire other people. If you can inspire other people, then that is the essence of the Catholic Foundation Award. It kills Mark 
and Georgia to get the attention that they're getting tonight. In fact, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't called in sick uh, because uh, he just wants to do good work. Uh, and, and Georgia's the same way. They don't think they deserve it because it's not about awards for them. It's, it's never been about that. And um, that makes it even more special that they're getting it. Yeah. Is that right? I think, I think that's right. Okay, good. <laughs> It's an honor to be asked to speak on your behalf. I know that you're a little uneasy about this honor that you're receiving. And I think to make it a little easier for you, you might wanna go back to your South Louisiana roots a little bit and just think of this as, as a little land yap for a life well lived. Job well done, good and faithful servant. On behalf of the entire extended Lions clan, congratulations on this most important honor the foundation will grow because of your leadership. You are the best, we love you. I can't think of anybody I'd rather be at a dinner with celebrating this award. We wanna celebrate you tonight and the gift you have been to this Catholic community. Mark, you've been a, uh, a great Catholic mentor to me. You've been a great business partner, servant leader. You are an inspiration to us all. Cheers. Congratulations, Mom and Dad. Congratulations, Georgia and Mark. I thank God every day that you're my parents. We're so proud of you and the way you live your lives. On behalf of the Catholic community, we thank you for all that you have done. Congratulations, Gigi and Pops. Congratulations, Gigi and Pops. We love you. We all we love, love you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Catholic Foundation's 41st Annual Award Dinner Honorees, Georgia and Mark Lyons. Joining, joining us on stage are two of the former Catholic Foundation board chairs who served in that role when Mark was a trustee, Vicki Latner and John Landon. I'll make it work. <laughs> well, thank you, Matt and Dan and Tom, uh, excuse me, uh, Dan and uh, Vicki and John for being up here. And Jeff, thank you very much for such a wonderful introduction. Um, what can I say? It was take me away. Amanda, congratulations to you and Jeff on Eustace James. And I had written here, he was the youngest here tonight, but sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we already know that. <laughs> so. Wow, what an incredible night. Our hearts are just so full of gratitude. First and foremost, we wanna give thanks to God 
for all the blessings he has given us. We give him all the glory. Thank you, Bishop Burns and Bishop Kelly, by honoring us with your presence tonight. The Diocese of da Dallas is doubly blessed to have two outstanding shepherds. And thank you, Bishop Kelly, for opening us this evening with prayer. And thank you in advance to Father Vincent Aniyama, Rector of Holy Trinity Seminary, who will be offering our benediction at the close of the program. Thank you again, Dan, and to the Catholic Foundation Board of Trustees. Thank you for selecting us for this tremendous honor. Thank you, Matt Kramer and the Catholic Foundation staff. Thank you in particular to Darina odowd Padian, who orchestrated this event tonight. And we also have to give a big shout out to our friend Cheryl Mansour, who devoted herself to many of these award dinners. The Catholic Foundation has an incredible team of talented individuals who work together to host this most elegant evening. Thank you, Jane and Don Hanratty, our phenomenal committee chairs. We so appreciate your friendship and your leadership. And thank you to the 60 plus award dinner committee members. You fill this ballroom, amazing job. And thank you to the table sponsors, donors, and to all the attendees here tonight. We cherish your presence. And thank you to our family and friends that came to celebrate with us. We particularly want our seven siblings and spouses to know how much their being here means to us. We love y'all. <laughs> and you know, there are many surprises that we had tonight, but maybe one of the biggest surprises was having our friend Lucia Welsh uh, sing so beautifully for us. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you so much. And finally, thank you to all the stars that appeared on the video. You guys were great, awesome. And you know, Georgia, it's gonna cost us a lot of money to pay all those people to say such nice things. I know, I guess we just have to go back to work. I don't know. Seriously, before we begin our remarks, we'd like to take a moment to recognize the 40 Catholic Foundation Award winners that preceded us. Your good work is simply inspirational. We would like to congratulate this year's Hal TN Scholar again. Josh Hayes, congratulations. Good luck on your uh, future endeavors. <clears throat> and Rob and Alicia, congratulations on Elizabeth. Now, Georgia, let's get started. Okay. The road to this evening all began several months ago when Matt Kramer invited Mark and me to lunch. When we walked into the restaurant, there was Matt, CEO of the Catholic Foundation, and Dan Odom was there. They were both at the table. Well, having Dan there was a bit of a surprise for us. We felt like we had been called to the principal's office <laughs> And the assistant principal was there for reinforcement. <laughs> Following a lovely lunch, Dan informed us that we had been chosen as the 41st Catholic Foundation Award recipients. Well, there aren't many times when we were speechless, but this was definitely one of them. We were never in our wildest dreams expecting to be asked to accept such an honor. Our first thoughts were how unworthy we were to join such an outstanding group of past recipients. To that, Matt and Dan replied, all the award recipients say that. <laughs> then they told us, it's not about you guys. Now that is a statement to which we wholeheartedly agree. This award dinner is much more than about us. It's a celebration of Catholic philanthropy. Actually, a celebration of all of you. Next, Matt and Dan, Dan did their best to convince us 
by telling us we have a great story to tell. Hmm. After lunch, when Mark and I got into our car, we looked at each other and said, what's our story? <laughs> well, after months of contemplating this question, we concluded that our story is really pretty simple. You might even say ordinary. Here's the Reader's Digest version. And some of this you've already heard. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to hear it again? No. Uh, Mark and I were both blessed to be born into large Catholic families in South Louisiana. Back in the 50s, life revolved around faith and family, especially in our Italian and Cajun French cultures. We were surrounded by extended family, our grandparents, aunts, uncles, and lots of cousins. Our families were traditional in that our fathers were the hardworking breadwinners, while our mothers were the equally hardworking hearts of our homes and families. <clears throat> Through our parents' examples, we learned both their worth ethic and their Christian values. Our families were far from perfect, but as Mark's dad always said, we had everything we needed, not everything we wanted. Mark and I both had our strong family foundations reinforced in our Catholic school backgrounds. Mark attended Cathedral School in Lafayette, Louisiana from K through six grades before moving to Midland, Texas for his junior high and high school years. I completed grades 1 through 12 at St. John the Evangelist Catholic School in Plaquemine, Louisiana. We still have a special place in our hearts for Catholic education. Following high school, Mark and my paths would merge during the second semester of our freshman year at Nickel State University in Thibodeau, Louisiana. On a blind date, as you heard, which happened to take place on Friday the 13th. Lucky us. Well, we're blessed for sure. We dated throughout the remainder of college and were married in 1972. Mark began his career in the energy business in New Orleans where both of our wonderful children, Kristen and Greg, were born. Okay. After 10 years there and a quick stop in Houston, for two years, we moved the family to Dallas in 1985. How quickly the past four decades have gone by. Have they been filled with caring for our families, building our careers, volunteering in church, school, and community activities, welcoming our beautiful daughter-in-law, Jamie, into our family, becoming grandparents, to our precious grandchildren, Grace and Noah. And of course, finding time for Mark to squeeze in just a little golf. <laughs> well, maybe a round or two. Throughout our 51 years of marriage, we've tried to model what we learned as children, working hard and remain true to our Catholic principles. We have no marquee events in our lives. Well, okay. The birth of our children and our grandchildren were pretty special. And certainly, we don't have the extraordinary accomplishments of our predecessors. We've tried to do just a little bit here and a little bit there with our time and our resources. Blocking and tackling, no touchdowns or home runs, just ordinary giving and activities like everyone in this room does every day. To assist in our philanthropy, George and I established a donor advised fund at the Catholic Foundation for the reasons that Dan outlined earlier. Uh, we uh, are able to make tax efficient contribution to the foundation, to our fund, and then have those funds dis distributed to our favorite charities. Secondly, our fund is, the, the assets in our funds combined with the assets of other funds under management, and the investment revenue is used to fund annual grants that are distributed from the unrestricted philanthropy fund. 
So many organizations in our diocese community have benefited from Catholic Foundation grants. I don't know if everybody had a chance to see the grants that were awarded last year scroll on the screen as we're reading, but there's, you know, many organizations. One of the best experiences of my seven-year tenure on the, on the uh, Catholic Foundation board was, the, was participating in the grant process. Each trustee was able to do a site visit to evaluate a grant request, and these requests came from every charitable kind of organization you can imagine. Schools, elementary, high school, college, parishes, seminaries, pro-life groups, and many other ministries, the likes of which might be the Catholic uh, Music Ministry Initiative. Uh, I'd like to share a couple of highlights of a couple of grants that I was participated in, along with the impact the recipient organizations have had on our community. The first is St. Vincent de Paul Free Pharmacy. It's an idea that was championed by our friend Hank Herman for about a decade. In 2019, the pharmacy was in its infancy, and they made a grant request to have a full-time pharmacist, which is always a good thing for a pharmacy, <laughs> and a client intake assistant to help dispense the medications. By the way, essential drugs such as insulin are provided to their qualified uh, recipients at no cost. The Catholic Foundation grant was a small part of what has continued to impact the lives of those who would otherwise not be able to maintain their health. In 2024, the pharmacy, working alongside of several pharmaceutical companies, is on track to provide 125,000 prescriptions at no cost to its clients. Another grant request I reviewed came from the non-denominational Network of Community Ministries in Richardson. Their request was purchasing a refrigerated truck. You see, the network uh, obtained perishable foods from grocery stores in the area at no cost for its community market. The North Texas Food Bank was providing them assistance in securing these funds and delivering them to the network. But when the provider stores needed additional pickups, the food bank was not able to accommodate the request. So instead of losing access to truckloads of fresh food that would feed their clients, the network needed a refrigerated truck. A foundation grant combined with some creative work by the network locating a used refrigerated truck, voila, problem solved. Extra bonus of this would be in COVID times, the food bank, excuse me, the network was able to turn around and deliver foods to the neighborhoods of their clients. Yeah, these are just two examples of Catholic Foundation grants. There are countless more. During Mark's time on the board of trustees, our eyes were open to the many needs of our diocese and our community. We learned that the number of needs is limitless and the amount of money needed to satisfy these needs is incalculable. Sometimes it can just be overwhelming. St. Teresa of Calcutta, who devoted her life to serving the poor, gave us an inspiring quote encouraging us that we can all come together to make a difference in satisfying the many needs surrounding us. Just imagine the small, hunched over nun, less than five feet tall, saying these most profound words, and I quote, the needs are great and none of us, including me, ever do great things but we can all do small things with great love and together we can do something wonderful. In closing, Mark and I invite all of you to join us in doing small, ordinary things for the good of others. And together, 
we can accomplish the extraordinary. Thank you so much for this incredibly special evening. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Go this way. All right. <laughs>